David Stern is really interesting because he was so global, but he was so personal. And in 1984, when he just was hired as the commissioner of the NBA, uh, I got a phone call from his office saying, Commissioner Stern would like to meet with me. And I really didn't know at first who he really was. Uh, 84, I might have been, what, 23, 24 years old. So I flew to New York. I go into the Olympic Tower, which is pretty daunting. And I go in his office, and he closes the door. And I said, why'd you close the door? He said, because they'll fire me if they hear me talking about women's basketball. We have enough problems. He goes, I have collective bargaining. I have marketing. I, you know, he, global. He had a lot of things that he wanted to do. So with that, he says, Nancy, before my time as commissioner ends, there will be a WNBA. And I was like, what? This is 1984. He says there's going to be a WNBA. And I said, that is amazing. And he says, I have one wish. And I said, what's that? He goes, my wish and my hope is that you'll still be around to play in it. I thought it was absolutely amazing. So fast forward from 84 to 97, the inaugural season of the WNBA, I'm drafted in the elite draft by uh, the Colangelos and, and Cheryl Miller with the Phoenix Mercury the day before our first game sold out at America West Arena. I get a phone call from David Stern, and he calls me, and his voice is very emotional. You could hear it. And he goes, I'm so proud of you. I didn't know if you would be able to sustain it, but I, there's nothing more impactful for me than to, to see you out here playing, and I'm just proud. I'll never forget him calling me. Okay, so that's my playing career. and. I've said this for years. Every female that played in the NBA should have written a handwritten note to David Stern and said, thank you. Thank you for changing my life. Thank you for giving me hope. Thank you for giving me a platform and opportunity. Because you would have never heard of Lisa Leslie or Dawn Staley or Cheryl Swoops or Maya Moore or Brianna Stewart or Tarasi or Bird without David Stern. Then... In two, he was getting ready to go in 2012 to the Olympics, maybe a week before. And I, I cold called him. He called me back. And, I, and I, he goes, Nancy, what can I do for you? I said, sir, I really feel like I'm ready. And I could really, I don't know what to do. I really want to coach in the NBA. And he says, it's going to happen. He says, but you have to promise me something. You got this far in life because of your attitude and your belief and, you know, just being, I think he was trying to say I was an alpha wolf. But he said, be who you are. He said to me, where are you going to be like the weekend of September 12th through the 14th? I said, I'm going to be in Springfield at the, the Basketball Hall of Fame for enshrinement. And he says, no, you're not. I said, what do you mean? I go all the time. He goes, Nancy, the Hall of Fame is so important and that's who you were. Who you want to be is in California. It's the NBA symposium. It's being hosted by the Clippers, Vinny Del Negro. You need to talk to Warren Legary. And I went, who's Warren Legary? He's like, Warren Legary, I will send you his number. Warren Legary, you know, uh, is one of the most powerful people in the NBA. He's an amazing agent. He started NBA Summer League. He grew it with Albert Hall, his business partner, into what NBA Summer League is today. He's, he's a remarkable guy. And L Warren Legary took me under his wing, invited me to the symposium. I was the only woman there for like a year or two. And you know, maybe Natalie with the Clippers was there. But Warren really ushered me through this, you know, NBA, you know, what what the steps might be until I ended up getting hired in 2015 by the Kings. That's David Stern also. It was him mentoring me. It was him saying, don't change who you are. You've been a fighter your whole life. You need to be a fighter to achieve certain things. David Stern was a fighter. He was a New York guy. You know, they talk about how he was no nonsense because he had a vision. He changed the culture in America, he changed the culture internationally. 
What do you think the, the games were opened in, two th in, in uh, 1988 to professionals? David Stern was more powerful than Boris Stankovic, the head of FIBA. And when David said the NBA is going to come in, it happened. David took an average salary in 1984 of $250,000 or so to the average salary today of $7.7 million. He gave generational wealth to young men that needed to have a chance. He's changed everything on every level for, for men, women, minorities. He, he was such a fighter for all of us. And, um, you know, uh, after I saw David for the last time September at the, uh, the Hall of Fame, and we took this beautiful picture uh, with Danny Issel and with uh, Spencer Haywood. And as I'm walking away, he would always just joke with me. Okay, so whoever watches it, it's a joke. But David would go, ah, you came back, you came back to our side. Meaning, you know, I mean, my family's going to be Jewish, I'll be Jewish. But the fact that I had Moses, as I go, David, I needed Moses and Jesus in my backcourt. You know, I had to solidify my go-to guys. And he goes, we owe this to your son. He goes, what? I go, what? He goes, we owe it to your son, TJ, because TJ is his third year playing in Tel Aviv. In, in Israel. He goes, ah, TJ brought you back to the other side. <laughs> You're a Jew again. I said, I was always a Jew. And we would laugh. And then I'm walking away. He stops. And he goes, Nancy, come back here. And I come back. He goes, am I the only person here who doesn't have a copy of the body issue? And he just started smiling. And I said, I love you. And he goes, I love you too. He, he was amazing. And, you know, Adam texted me after he died, I texted Adam and said, look, I'm really sorry for our loss because he was such a great friend and mentor to Adam Silver, who's the greatest commissioner in sports today. And he said, David was very fond of you. I don't think I'll, um, I don't think I'll ever delete that. And that's my David Stern story, and I love him and I miss him.